present in the moment, how to overcome your ego and your pain, but how can we apply these concepts to our everyday lives, an awakening to one's true nature? Do you want to escape the trap of your mind and experience true joy? Do you want to learn how to live in the present and stop worrying about the past or the future? Do you want to awaken to your true self and find your purpose in life? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you need to watch this video. We're going to explore the life-changing teachings of Eckhart Tolle and his amazing book, The Power of Now, A Guide to Spiritual Enlightenment. This book has transformed millions of lives, and it can transform yours too. In this video, we'll show you how to apply the power of now to your everyday life, how to overcome your ego and your pain, and how to connect with your inner wisdom and creativity. This video is not just a summary, it's a deep dive into the essence of spiritual enlightenment. Grab your popcorn, get comfortable, and get ready to be blown away by the power of now. Let's go! The Power of Now, A Guide to Spiritual Enlightenment is a spiritual self-help book by Eckhart Tolle that emphasizes the importance of living in the present moment and achieving a state of mindfulness and inner peace. The book argues that being fully present in the moment can help individuals break free from negative patterns of thought and behavior, leading to a more fulfilling and joyful life. It explores themes such as ego, consciousness, and the nature of existence, and provides practical advice for cultivating a more mindful and spiritual awareness. The book is based on Tola's own personal experience of spiritual awakening, which he claims happened to him spontaneously after a long period of depression and suicidal thoughts. The book is divided into 10 chapters, each addressing a different aspect of the power of now, such as the nature of consciousness, the role of emotions, the meaning of surrender, and the practice of meditation. The book's main idea is that most people are trapped in a state of unconsciousness, where they identify with their thoughts and emotions and constantly project their past and future onto the present. This creates a false sense of self, which Toll calls the ego, and leads to a lot of negative emotions, such as fear, anger, anxiety, guilt, and resentment. The book argues that the only way to escape this state of suffering is to become aware of the present moment, which is the only reality that exists. By focusing on the now, one can access a deeper level of being, which Tolle calls the inner body, or the essence of who we are. This is the source of true joy, peace, and love, and the connection to the universal intelligence, or God. The book's themes include the importance of awareness, acceptance and surrender, the illusion of time, the power of silence and stillness, the difference between pain and suffering, the role of the body and the senses, the nature of relationships, and the purpose of life. The book's messages are that we are not our thoughts and emotions, but the awareness behind them that we can choose to live in the now instead of the past or the future, that we can transcend our ego and access our true self, and that we can experience the divine within us and around us. The book's motifs are the use of questions and answers, the use of metaphors and analogies, the use of anecdotes and stories, and the use of quotations and references from various spiritual traditions and teachers. The book's strengths are that it offers a simple and practical way to achieve spiritual enlightenment, that it draws from various sources of wisdom and knowledge, that it appeals to a wide range of readers from different backgrounds and beliefs, and that it inspires and motivates people to change their lives for the better. The book's weaknesses are that it can be repetitive and vague at times, that it can be challenging and confronting for some readers, that it can be misinterpreted or misunderstood by some readers, and that it can be criticized for being too simplistic or idealistic by some critics. My own perspective on the book is that it is a valuable and insightful guide to living in the present moment and finding inner peace and happiness. I think the book has helped me to become more aware of my thoughts and emotions and to let go of the ones that are not serving me. I think the book has also helped me to appreciate the beauty and wonder of the now and to connect with myself and others on a deeper level. I think the book is not a dogma or a doctrine, but a suggestion and an invitation to explore and discover the power of now for oneself. I think the book is not the final word on spiritual enlightenment, but a starting point and a catalyst for further growth and learning. The 
The book offers practical and profound insights into how we can achieve a state of awareness and peace that transcends our ordinary consciousness. But how can we apply these concepts to our everyday lives? How can we experience the power of now in real-world situations? Here, I will present some examples and case studies that demonstrate the concepts discussed in the book and show you how they can transform your life for the better. One of the main concepts in the book is the distinction between our true self and our false self. Our true self is our essence, our being, our awareness. Our false self is our ego, our identity, our thoughts. The book argues that most of us are trapped in our false self and identify with our mind, which creates a sense of separation and conflict with ourselves, others, and the world. The book teaches us how to disidentify from our mind and reconnect with our true self, which is one with the source of all life. A real-world example of this concept is the story of Byron Katie, a woman who suffered from severe depression, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts for many years. She was unhappy with herself, her husband, her children, and her life. She felt hopeless and helpless. One day she woke up and had a life-changing realization. She realized that all her suffering was caused by her thoughts and that she could question and challenge them. She realized that she was not her thoughts, but the awareness that witnessed them. She realized that she could choose to believe or not believe her thoughts, and that by doing so, she could change her reality. She developed a simple method of inquiry called the work, which consists of four questions and a turnaround that helps people identify and question their stressful thoughts and find the truth. She became free from her depression and anxiety and dedicated her life to helping others find the same freedom. She is now a renowned speaker, author, and teacher of the work, and has helped millions of people around the world. This example illustrates how Byron Katie was able to disidentify from her false self, her ego, and reconnect with her true self, her awareness. She was able to experience the power of now by questioning and letting go of her thoughts, which were rooted in the past and the future, and by living in the present moment, which is the only reality. She was able to find peace and happiness within herself, and to share it with others, Another concept in the book is the importance of accepting the present moment as it is, and not resisting or judging it. The book explains that most of us are in a state of unconscious resistance to what is, and that this creates a lot of pain and suffering in our lives. The book teaches us how to surrender to the present moment, and to embrace it as an opportunity for growth and learning. The book also teaches us how to practice gratitude and appreciation for the present moment, and to see the beauty and the miracle of life in every situation. A real-world example of this concept is the story of Nick Vujicic, a man who was born without arms and legs. He faced many challenges and difficulties in his life, such as bullying, discrimination, loneliness, and depression. He felt angry, bitter, and hopeless. He even attempted to end his life at the age of 10. However, he did not succeed, and he decided to give life another chance. He realized that he had a choice, to be a victim or a victor. He chose to be a victor. He chose to accept his condition and to make the best of it. He chose to be grateful for what he had and to use his talents and abilities to inspire and help others. He became a motivational speaker, a best-selling author, a musician, an actor, a husband, and a father. He travels the world and shares his message of hope, faith, and love. He's a living example of the power of acceptance, gratitude, and positivity. This example illustrates how Nick Vujicic was able to surrender to the present moment and to accept his situation as it was. He was able to experience the power of now by focusing on what he could do rather than what he could not do and by being grateful for what he had rather than complaining about what he lacked. He was able to find joy and meaning in his life and to spread it to others. A third concept in the book is the role of the pain body, which is the accumulated energy of emotional pain that we carry within us. The book explains that the pain body is a part of our ego that feeds on negative emotions and thoughts, and that it can be triggered by certain situations, people, or memories. The book teaches us how to recognize and dissolve the pain body, and how to free ourselves from its influence. A real-world example of this concept is the story of Malala Yousafzai, a girl who was shot in the head by the Taliban for speaking out for girls' education in Pakistan. She survived the attack, but was left with physical and emotional scars. She could have succumbed to her pain body and become bitter, angry, and fearful. She could have given up on her dreams and on her cause, but she did not. 
she chose to forgive her attackers and to continue her fight for girls' education. She became a global activist, a Nobel Peace Prize laureate, a UN messenger of peace, and a student at Oxford University. She is a symbol of courage, resilience, and hope. This example illustrates how Malala Yousafzai was able to recognize and dissolve her pain body and to free herself from its grip. She was able to experience the power of now by forgiving and letting go of the past and by focusing on the present and the future. She was able to overcome her pain and to use it as a source of strength and inspiration. Eckhart Tolle is a spiritual teacher and author who was born in Germany and educated at the universities of London and Cambridge. He is best known for his best-selling books, The Power of Now and a New Earth, which have been translated into over 50 languages and have sold millions of copies worldwide. Tola's teachings are based on his own personal transformation, which he experienced after a profound inner crisis at the age of 29. He claims that he was able to transcend his ego and achieve a state of pure consciousness, which he calls the now. Tola's writing style is simple, clear, and direct, yet also profound and inspiring. He uses everyday language and examples to convey his message of living in the present moment and awakening to one's true nature. He also draws on various spiritual traditions, such as Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, Christianity, and Sufism, to illustrate his points and show the universal essence of spirituality. He does not claim to belong to any specific religion or doctrine, but rather to offer a way of life that is accessible and applicable to anyone, regardless of their background or beliefs. Tola's writing style also reflects his own personality and presence, which many of his readers and followers describe as calm, peaceful, and compassionate. He often uses humor and anecdotes to lighten the mood and engage his audience, as well as to challenge their assumptions and preconceptions. He also invites his readers to participate in the process of awakening by asking them questions, giving them exercises, and encouraging them to practice mindfulness and awareness in their daily lives. The Power of Now is Tola's first and most popular book, which he wrote in 1997 after being approached by a publisher who was impressed by his teachings. Tola has been named one of the most spiritually influential people in the world by Watkins Mind Body Spirit magazine and one of the 100 most influential people in the world by Time magazine. He has also received several awards and honors, such as the German Media Prize, the Omega Institute's Humanitarian Award, and the World Technology Award. Tola's mission is to help humanity awaken to its true potential and purpose, and to create a new earth that is based on awareness, compassion, and harmony. He believes that the power of now is the key to achieving this vision, and that by living in the present moment, we can access the source of all life and wisdom, and realize our true identity and connection with all that is. He invites us to join him in this journey of awakening and transformation, and to discover the power of now for ourselves. So that's it for my summary and analysis of The Power of Now, A Guide to Spiritual Enlightenment by Eckhart Tolle. I hope you found it informative and thought-provoking. This book has been a game-changer for me, and I can already see how it's transforming my perspective on life. The message of being present and aware in the moment has been particularly impactful for me. I would love to hear your thoughts on the book and your own journey towards spiritual enlightenment. If you've read the book, please leave a comment and share your insights. If you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend it. It's a powerful guide for anyone looking to deepen their spiritual awareness and connection. For your convenience, I've included a link to the book in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more book reviews and discussions on spiritual enlightenment. I'll be sharing more inspiring books and ideas, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.